Hey guys, it's Sandro here. And today's video is just a quick real-time demonstration showing the results that can be obtained using certain methods, techniques, and products in a general two-stage compounding and polishing process on this badly scratched painted panel. Now, I'll have all the products used in this video listed in the description box. But if you guys want a more comprehensive demonstration that further explains the preparation and correct methods used in paint correction, I have several videos which I'll link to the end screen of this one, which will hopefully answer any further questions you may have about this whole process. So for this demonstration, I'll be using the Ripper's LHR15 Mark II Polisher, starting with the Lake Country Blue HDO foam pad, together with NV Precision Compound for the first cutting stage. I'm applying four small drops of the compound to a fresh pad, I've got the melee set at speed 5.5 and, and I'll firstly spread the compound into the section, working in an area about 6 times the size of my pad. My arm movement is relatively slow and I'm applying just some moderate pressure as I run the polisher in both horizontal and vertical overlapping lines completing 3-4 to four row passes of my machine in total. Now in a two stage process, the first step is all about cut or leveling down the vast majority of the existing defects as a way of preparing the paint for the second finishing stage. So in essence, this first, more aggressive stage is where you need to remove the scratches, whereas the second stage is really all about improving gloss and clarity levels in the finish. I've tried to leave almost all the footage in this video in real time speed, as well as film in one continuous shot with very minimal editing, as it's something you guys have asked for, so I hope this style and format as a demonstration helps some of you out. A few more hopefully helpful points that I can add in relation to method and technique is that if I wanted to increase my cutting ability even further with this same combination, I could make some slight adjustments such as increasing the amount of compound, further reducing my arm speed, increasing my machine speed and even working smaller sections. But one important thing to add is that they should only be slight adjustments to this general technique. As if I add way too much compound and use far too much pressure, as well as just cranking the machine speed constantly, I will actually start to see the opposite effect and my results will take a turn for the worst. So what I'm trying to explain is that there is room for you to adjust your technique based on the results that you achieve. But if you start to sway too far from these general techniques, you start to encounter a large amount of issues, such as excess heat, dusting, difficult wipe-offs, and extremely bad results in the quality of your finish. Once I've completed my set of passes, I'll use a microfiber cloth to wipe and collect the compound residue, and I'll then use an isopropyl alcohol base cleaner or IPA wipe to remove any lingering polishing oils that may mask the paint's true finish. I'll then inspect my work with some proper lighting to see if I'm happy with the result or the level of defect removal. If not, I can try using other pads and compounds as well as adapting my technique to get the results I'm after. But if I am happy, I'll then move on to the second polishing stage. And I'll add once again that I do go more in depth about this testing process in many other videos that I'll link to the end screen of this one. So for the second or finishing polishing stage, I'll be using the Lake Country Orange HDO foam pad with NV Finesse Polish, but this time I'm going to halve the amount of polish on the pad, as well as lower my machine speed and just slightly reduce my pressure, but I'm actually going to slightly speed up my arm movement and reduce my work time to 2-3 to three passes. The reason for this slight variation in method and technique is that I'm no longer trying to remove the paint's existing defects. 
but actually just trying to remove the compounding haze that I created in the previous stage. So in other words, I'm just trying to remove some very light haze or micro marring that generally just requires a light combination technique to eliminate, but will then go on to reveal the paint's true gloss, saturation and clarity levels. So if I'm too aggressive with my product selection or technique in this second stage, it'll actually reduce the quality of my results. And as I explained earlier, how I can actually alter my technique to increase my cutting ability, I can also alter my technique to improve my finishing qualities in this second stage. So if the finish wasn't coming up as good as I'd like, I could try reducing the amount of polish on the pad even further as well as reduce my machine speed, increase my arm movement and even play around with more or less pressure based on what this particular paint responds best to. I've also left a section of the panel with just the first cutting stage results so that you guys can hopefully see the difference between a single stage on the paint which still looks quite good having removed the vast majority of the defects but you'll hopefully also see on the main two stage section that the paint is richer, darker and cleaner which is really what that second stage is all about, amplifying gloss. Just a couple of quick points I can add is that there's lots of great compounds, polishes, pads and machines that can also do the job. So you don't need to use exactly what I'm using here. But the reason I chose these particular ones for this video was for the pure and simple fact that they generally work extremely well for me as a whole. Now, there's no such thing as 100% defect free or perfect paint. And if I really wanted to, I could further correct this panel to remove even a greater amount of the defects. But hopefully you guys can see that with just a quick and simple two stage process, this paint has been significantly improved and restored so that it does look quite amazing. I'll end by saying that I know a short video such as this can't cover all the fundamentals of paint correction or answer all the potential questions you may have. But for those of you that have repeatedly asked for a shorter, more concise look at a basic two-stage paint correction process, I really hope it helped. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video useful. Please share this video, like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon.